Hey peeps, thanks for peeping. Uh, come back. We're going to do the uh, second bracket. Oh, uh, Jerry the Jester says, and now we have Chickamac from Mache Mente. She's an herbalist, and she hopes that if she wins this tournament, she can search for the Queen's Osage. Which is a very rare herb. She will not tell us what it's for. On the other side, we have Parmesan. He is a dirt bound who resides in Basara, the shanty town. And we're not sure why he's here. <laughs> anyway, they do the usual telling the rules and what's going to happen. So, first, as last time. We gotta roll a two D four plus their body. And if I'm not mistaken, Chickamac has one body. But uh oh. Parmesan has two. That's the first one we got from that. But anyway, we're gonna go to uh roll the dice. Gonna bring them out. And also I kinda wanna change the color of them. I don't think they stand out enough. Bring out two more. The black ones weren't very lucky for us. All right. So first we're going to roll uh, Chicken Max initiative. Oh, there's a three plus one. That gives her a four. So we already got hers ready. That puts her way down here. That's why we got full Parmesan frame. Let's see what he gets. Remember, he has a plus two. So it's four plus two. So he'd be a six. So he'll get to go first. And the thing about Parmesan, he's a uh, uh, dirt bound, so he should be, he can use Bramble Wall. But he also has a hoe named Darlin, who is his best friend, because he spends a lot of time by himself on the outskirts of Basra. So, let's see what his movement is, because he probably would try to get closer, I would think. So his movement is, ooh! 10. Oh, wow. Jeez. He's got a slight advantage here. So let's move him 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. I'll come up like that. I don't know how wise that is because she probably could move 5. Mm, I think that's a good idea. So now it's her turn. Let's uh, let's look back at her page. Let's see what, what does she have as a weapon. She has shears. <laughs> To do two points of damage. Uh, let's see. And if I'm not mistaken, it was a f five movement, right? Yeah, five movement. It makes sense because her body's a one and movement is your body times five. So she moves five. One, two, three, four, five. Eh, this puts her in aim. Oh, you know what? I'm going to use her charisma. I just now realized she has charisma because she is human. I'm going to try to sow the seeds of doubt in the... Or Chickam is going to try to sow the seeds of doubt into Parmesan. So she's going to roll this a two because it uses mind. She's going to uh, roll to succeed. Basically she's going to say, Oh, dirt bound, why are you even out here? Why are you even fighting in this? You have no need of money. That's the only thing that's going to come out of this if you win. So let's roll and see what she she pulls off. Ooh, she got a four right there. So that means it was successful. So how will he react? Let's see. I'm going to get him get a roll. But he'll only be able to roll one, so let's clear that out. Because he's thinking about it. Why am I here? Why? <laughs> why did the, why would I even do this? I don't need this. He said, but I did win. <laughs> I did win the lottery. So he rolled a three. So that, if I'm not mistaken, that means he kind of succeeds, but he kind of loses his turn. So he's she's going to try to move in on her turn. 
And let's see if he thinks about it again. Let's give him one more chance. So it's kind of like she's causing him to skip his turn because he's thinking about why am I doing this? So let's give him a chance to one more time. Nope. So he's still thinking about it. So she's going to close in and she's going to attack him. Uh, next turn. So this gives him another chance. Nope. He's still thinking about it. He's still considering it. So now she's going to attack. Now... Going with luck. She does have six luck. Let's use one of them to hit. All right, so we're gonna, she uses one, so she's gonna get a extra dice to roll. So let's throw that one out and let's roll. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that, that nets her experience point, too. I gotta write that down or I'll forget. So she, she comes in, she stabs him. That's full damage. She stabs him with her uh, shears. So uh, that takes two points, I believe. Let's make sure. Yes, two points. So let's go over to how many does Parmesan have? Well, he only has three. Of a week, so she already did two. So now it's his turn. So I think the attack would knock him back out and say, "Hey, wait a minute! She's trying to, she's trying to kill me. <laughs> we could have done this a different way." So he's going to try to hit her with his good friend, uh, Darlene. So he's going to roll a hit. Ah, uh, two ones. Okay, so. She gets to roll to hit to do a counterattack, right? No, no, that's right. If he rolls a one, he automatically gets hit. So she was able to counterattack. So just like that, she took him out. And the odd thing is, the dirtbound, oh, excuse me, the ladies of the divine light, they don't run in to get him. Instead, he just dissipates. And disappears because dirt bound if they die they dissolve and next spring they sprout back up so they're already kind of immortal so so anyway he uh dissipates and disappears and they call her as the winner okay wait a minute i was just looking through the rules and i realized fours on all your dice net you a luck. So really Chicka Mac gets a plus one to her luck going forward. Uh, but she does get a plus one to her XP because she defeated uh, Parmesan. And Amethyst will get plus one to his uh, XP for defeating um, Julia. And Parmesan will get a plus one XP because he rolled all ones. All ones is a fail forward mechanic so um, he'll get an XP for that so anyway on to the next bracket then the next two come out it's bracket number three and Jerry goes hello Heffa from Hogsholt the blacksmith this guy right here I think my friends were trying to create uh, the hard names to say. I'm calling him Heifer. I'm not sure what they meant it to be. And Heja from Machamante, the tailor. So then they're both sitting there, ready to go to battle. Now, well, let's take a look at them before we go into it. Uh, here's Mr. Huffa, Huffa, what do you want to call it? If it'll sit in, right? And he is a blacksmith, but it says thief there. Oh, that's right. I remember now. He he's he goes. He says he's a blacksmith. <laughs> he's really a thief. But anyway, he has a body of two, so he should have the advantage. You would think. So he's got that ten movement, but his luck is really low. Then Ezra, who is a tailor, 
one of the few characters I think we have that has a soul of two. That soul is his high one, which is really useless in, in combat, but still. He does have a pair of shears that do three, so they're, they're matched damage-wise, so we'll see what happens. But first, before we can get started with the battle, let's see uh, what each one of them rolls. Let's bring out the dice for old Hefa. Roll 2d4. Add their body, which is 2. So this is 5 plus 2 is 7, so that should put him at 7. So we'll go ahead and put him at 7. And while we got him over here, we'll go ahead and do Ezra. Ooh, 6, but... I think his body was just one, so because he had souls, his high one. So six plus uh, one is gives him seven. So they're all they're even. Oh, so that's going to make it difficult. So how do we do that? Let's do a roll off since they're not together in the same area. But we'll let both of them roll one dice to decide who's ahead. So I'm gonna drop one for Ezra. Let him roll. So he had a two. We'll let uh, half a roll. Ah, so as 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 uh, goes first. So we'll just put him right up there. All right, let's look. Let's see. He, gosh, he, his movement was fine. He just doesn't have anything good. He has charisma, but here's the thing: charisma don't work on other humans. <laughs> well. Yeah, it's not going to work on, on between the two of them because they both would have that, so it don't really work. Um, I guess they could try. But it's only going to be a, a one. Eh. What was Heifer's? His was ten. So let me look at the field. See see what kind of... I'll see if he comes in ten. One, two. Okay, okay, cool. cool. Uh, so I'm just going to move five with him. One, two, three, four, five. And then it's Heifer's turn. He's going to try to move in. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now it's uh, Ezra. One, two, three, four. Nah, 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 nah. Let me think about this. Maybe I will try to talk him out of it. No, because I don't know that he really has anything over him. He probably recognizes the fact that Heifer is a is a, is a thief. So I'm, I'm going to try to charge him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in here. So I'm going to get close. And then I'm going to let uh, Heifer's turn go. He's going to try to hit. So remember, he, he can use two dice and put another one out there. So he's going to try to hit him. And oh, <laughs> so he misses. He got two ones off. But but wait a minute, that would give him an experience point. Just in case I use the characters later. So right now he's got a plus uh, one experience. Remember, rolling ones on your hit is a fail forward forward game. So he rolled ones, so he gets a plus one to his XP. He still he still gets takes a point of damage. But anyway, let's see what kind of. What was his hearts? Oh, he had four. So we'll go ahead and take one off. Now it's Ezra's turn. And he's going to try to attack. So I need to take one away because he only has one. So there's his one. Let's roll. Okay, he hits, but he only does one point of damage. And now it's Heifer's turn. So we'll put another dice out. He's going to try to hit him. He misses. Oh, I keep forgetting about luck. <laughs> now it's Ezra's turn. But he only has one result. Forget that. He only gets to roll one. Gosh. <laughs> oh, no, that's full damage. I cannot believe that. No, oh, well. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ezra stabs him. gets full damage, which gives him an extra luck. And he does a full three points of damage. Killing, taking the rest of Heifer's, uh, 
hit points. Now, oh, oh, we gotta do it. It's all part of the thing. And of course, the ladies, they come down there and. Whoa! They come down there and uh, they heal him. And he pops back up and he says, you know, oh well. And he says, I appreciate the opportunity. So and then he, he walks off. And that leaves Ezra as the winner moving on in the brackets. And on to the next bracket. And then the next two come out. And we'll go ahead and take a look at them. My wife, I'm going to let Jerry say his piece. He says, uh, And now, our next bracket. This would be bracket number four for those keeping track. Jim Bob from Basra. I understand he owns a bar there. I didn't know they had bars in the shanty town. And Matilda of Horg's Holt. And then they get ready to f to do their fight. And we'll go ahead and take a look at them. We'll start with Jim Bob Brewer. <laughs> Jim Bob Brewer. <sighs> but anyway, he's a fun guy, which is kind of like uh, Mushroom People. Uh, which have become a thing for us because uh, a couple of our adventures have Mushroom People in it. But anyway, uh, he's uh, a brewer. You know, owns a bar, runs a local pub there, it says. And uh, one of the things about the fungi is they have uh, spore clouds. Like, they can sprout spore cloud, a cloud in a certain spot adjacent to them. And anybody that gets near that or is adjacent to it has to roll to save using their body. And if they don't, then they take a point of damage. And it's, like, continuous. And looking at him, he, he's only got mine, so he don't have body. So let's look at Matilda. Once, once again, let's see here. His movement's five, okay. Then it's got uh, Matilda, who is a thief. I guess she's admitting that she's a thief. But she uh, sells jewelry on the side, so I imagine she steals the jewelry and then sells it. But anyway, uh, she does some metal work, so she knows something about that. She has hide in shadows. I don't know that's going to be effective here, because there's really not any shadows. So Anyway, she does have a dagger, though. What did uh, Jim Bob have? Oh, ladle, one point. Yeah, that's going to be helpful. But anyway, she can move 10 because she has a body too. Now, I've said it before, and it's not been true, <laughs> but you would think with the body being her big area in a fight, she'd have a better chance. But let's wait and see. So we go back here. We're going to go ahead and get a, a dice out for him. We'll start with Jim Bob Brewer. Put his dice out and roll them. And he has three plus, what, one from his body. So he's four. So, oh. Left over some stuff. Let's get rid of that. So we're looking for Jim Bob. We'll throw him out there. The 12. There we go. What I say was th oh, 3 plus 1 is 4. So he's at 4. Alright, and then we'll do Matilda. Almost a normal name. So that's a 5. But she's got plus. Uh, she got two bodies, so that's plus two. So she's a seven. We can find Miss Matilda. There she is. I wonder why those are so much smaller. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyway, so she gets to go first. So let's look at her again. Let's see what would she do first. Uh, I can't do really hide in shadows. There's no shadows out here. And she's in front of everybody, so that really don't work for her. But she can move ten and start trying to. To get him so let's move 10 so she makes a beeline for him so he can't even move into that so what are we gonna do Jim Bob I say he would move down here no he's not He's not. I'm going to cast Spore Cloud. So he would only be able to use one because it's a body thing. So I'm going to roll. Nope. 
He wasn't. He's not able to do. He's trying to squeeze out some spores, but nothing happens. So now it's her turn. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to get near him. Let's hope he don't pull off uh, pull off spore cloud on her. <laughs> so it's his turn, uh, and that's exactly what he's gonna do. He's gonna try to do spore cloud. Yes, so he does spore cloud. Ah, what direction? Do I want to make it random or he's gonna drop it on her? There's no, there's no other way he would do it. So he throws spore cloud out where she's at, and let's see if we can get this to work. We'll make it gray. Uh, spore cloud. Well, let's be a little. Right there. So it's in that little center area there. Alright, so once uh I guess she should roll since she's in that area. Let's see if it damages her any. So she's she can roll on her body. You roll on your body to go against it. And we throw another one out there because she's two and roll. A one and a two. So that's a fail. So she's gonna take a point of damage. So Matilda Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Gotta watch it. Let's zoom in a little bit on this action here. All right, so now it's Matilda's turn. Uh, she has she can use two dice, so she's gonna try to hit him. Oh, there's a four, so she hits, and that is wasn't it three points? Yes, it is three points. So let's see what uh, hammer hit has. Oh. Jim Bob. Well, he got in some spore hit points there for a few seconds. <laughs> so he's down. Go ahead and do it. You got to do it. So she takes him down. And we'll let Maple go down there and work. She ain't done no work this game so far. She goes down, peels him. He. Pops back up and says, Oh, well, he says, I'll go back to making my beers. And uh, he walks off. And they declare Matilda winner to move on to the next brackets. And then the next two come running in. And we got uh, Diana over here and, uh, and Marcus. But I want you to take a note. Tarman's been hiding up there in the corner there. Hmm. Anyway, Jerry, he starts in. He says, And now, for this next bracket, which once again is bracket number five, we have Diana, a hunter from Portsmouth, and Marcus, a merchant from Portsmouth as well. It is our understanding that he went through dubious methods to get his own ticket to this event. I wonder, should we wish him luck? <laughs> and the battle begins. So, like was uh, as usual, let's look at them. Diana, short shot, which is a human. Uh, she's okay. So she's got uh, a sling. Ah, so this battle, this match will have two ranged weapons. Uh, sling. Basically, your range is the same as your movement. That's right, so your same. Whatever your movement is, is how far you can shoot something. So. She can shoot 10 away, and it does two points of damage if she connects. Then Marcus, he has a dagger, because he's a merchant. Does three points, but once again, he doesn't have a good body. And then Darman, who's hiding out there, who's come for revenge, he is. Uh, he took, went to the library, found one of the special books in the, in the resource area, research area, and took it and sold it, and used that money to buy himself a bow and arrow. I mean, he's just, he's he's determined he's going to go in there. He says, think out of the box, right? That's what I was, how, what's his name? Marcus stole his ticket to start with. So he says, oh, I, I'll think out of the box. So he's come here to attack him, kill him, and take over this bracket. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, back to him. So we're going to have to roll for each one of them. So let's put uh, two dice out there. And if I remember Diana, let's go Diana. Yeah, she has two body. The other two just have one. 
so we didn't only add one to them. So anyway, we'll go back to this. We're going to roll for her. Oh, so she's eight. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, eight, because she does a two. She has rolled a six, but two from their body. So we're going to go ahead and give Diana to eight. Let's go ahead and roll for Marcus. Ooh, well, he only has one, but he's nine, nonetheless. So that gives him a head. No. Okay, so it crashed there again. Like I said, this system, it runs pretty good, but when it hits a crash, it's out. So anyway, we're going to roll for Darman. That's where we was headed. So let's go ahead and give his uh, dice out. Roll them. Oh, well, it'll be later then. But anyway, he'll be at three. But see, here's here's his thing. They're not expecting him yet, right? They don't they don't have a clue he's out there. They're under underneath these walls. So anyway, so the first person is Marcus. So what's Marcus gonna do? Well, where is Marcus? There's Marcus. He's got charisma. That's not gonna work on Diana. I guess he could try. I think he's just gonna run for it. I mean, he's he's got six luck. Hmm. So I wanna go ahead and move in to attack her. So we just move. I think it was five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then it's Diana's turn. Oh, how far away is he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. You know what? I'm just gonna move up two stop with Diane. Darman's not doing anything yet. He's waiting. Now let me think about that. I think I'm going to have him go ahead and use jump away. What is, how does jump away work? Jump. That would help, that would help him. He can do five. So to help him get over the wall. So we'll go ahead and do it. So it's a body. Unfortunately for him, that's just one. So we'll go ahead. Let's see how he does. Oh, he can't get over the fence. He tried to jump and he fell back. Maybe he'll get a chance next time. But anyway, now it's back to Marcus. He's going to move in a five. So now he's in range for Diana. And she can have two dice. So she's going to go ahead and use her sling. She hit on one, but she only does one point of damage. So we'll take one point off Marcus. Where is Marcus? There he is. Well, we only had four. I don't know. And then uh, after Diana would be uh, Dharma. So we're going to try Dharma one more time. Take one away. Take him away. Put his one. And then roll. Dang. Well, he got a plus. He got an experience point. <laughs> He can't get over the wall. <laughs> we'll feel sorry for him if you don't get this in. All right, so Marcus is going to close in. Then it's Diane's turn. So she is going to move away 10. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. There you go. No. Let's do one more. That right there. That would she would have come down at an angle there. So she she moves around. And then it's uh, Darman's turn again. He's gonna he's gonna try. Dang it, Darman! Well, that was another experience point. Huh? He's just failing. He can't get over that wall. So now. Um, Marcus is going to go. And then she is going to try to hit. She just does one point of damage. So that takes Marcus down one more. Come on. Come on, Darman. You can make it over that wall. Let's roll. Oh, so he just barely makes it. Oh, we gotta unlock him. My bad. He jumps over the wall. We'll just say he gets over. 
And everybody's like, oh no. <laughs> Hello. It appears that someone has jumped onto the field. And they're all clamoring going on. Says, what is he trying to do? And Lord, uh, everybody turns and looks at uh, Lord, uh, Dread Lord Lancaster. And he just sort of nods like, it's okay. You know, like, hey, I've said outside the box, you know, <laughs> go ahead. So his next turn, he'll start coming in. Marcus is like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm trying to get my ticket back. So anyway, um, so now it's back to him. He's like, man, this woman is dodging around me and, and hitting me with rocks. I got to figure out something. So he's going to try to, uh, what does he got, a dagger? I'm going to try to throw my dagger at her because it could do three points of damage. What is Diana's? Well, she's got four. But if he throwed his dagger, it may make it a range attack, right? Let's use some luck. So let's go look. Let's see how much luck Mr. Marcus has. Oh, we got two brackets to go. I'm going to use two points of luck. So it's going to take me down to four. So I should be able to do two more dice. So I mean, three dice that he can use to do this roll. There you go. Marcus. Yeah, it's Marcus. So he's going to roll. That's going to give him three dice altogether. What he's doing, he's trying to use his dagger. Let's make sure. I'm pretty sure he had a dagger. Yes, he has a dagger. He's going to use his dagger to throw it at her to do damage because she's dodging and weaving around him. But that means his dagger will be where she's at. So let's see. Oh, no. <laughs> he misses. <laughs> so he, he throws he throws the uh, dagger at her. It misses. Uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to go right here. Let me use my thing of bobber to make it. We're going to use this red to signify one, two, three, four, five. There's his dagger just laying there on the ground. And she's like, aha, I dodged it. So now it's it's uh, her turn. She's going to, well, Marcus is not looking good for you. She's going to uh, shoot her uh, sling. Like I said, she's got two, so she's going to throw two out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And she's going to roll. Ah, oh, She misses but it gives him an opportunity. Well, he's not armed. Maybe he, she failed, right? And it would give him a counterattack. So that gives him a chance to press forward. Oops. To uh, press forward and attack. So he would do one point of damage to her. Maybe he punched her, right? So that means he got to close in. All right, now it's Dharma's turn. One, two, three. Three, four, five. So he's he's closing in to attack. So once he's there, his next turn, he'll get to shoot Marcus if you know nothing else happens. All right, Marcus is going to try to punch her again. And at this point, Marcus is really trying hard. So would he use some more luck? Because he's in a bad place. He's at two. She's at three. The punching's only going to do one. So maybe he should go get his... I think he would go get his dagger. So he slips by her to grab his dagger. So now he's got his dagger back. Now it's her turn. She's just going to shoot from there. And all she needs is, is two, right? If she gets this, then she pretty much takes him out. Now here's the other question. Would Darman attack her? After, on the next turn. Well, one step at a turn. So it's, it's Diana's turn. She's going to roll to the hit with her sling. Ah, oh, she just does one point of damage. So Marcus is still with us. So I almost counted him out. He's still with us. Now it's Darman's turn. Darman's going to shoot at Marcus. Now, let's look at Darman. You know, he's just got one body. He's got eight luck. Oh my goodness. 
if he could just hit this, he would take Marcus out. I am going to use four. He is, he's trying to guarantee his success. So he's going to get to roll five dice to try to hit Marcus. So let's put five dice out. One, two, three, four, five. Surely. <laughs> there. You got two fours. Full damage on Marcus. So he fires the bow and arrow. That takes Marcus out. He's, he's down. And then, you know, Diane's looking over. She's like, what is your deal? He, she says, Marcus stole my ticket from me. And so I'm back here. I'm, I got to face you to, to win. I've got to win. She says, who are you telling? I got to win too. She says, I got things I want to do with this too. So it's back to her turn. What was uh, Darman at? Oh, we didn't put Darman's uh, hit points out. Let's go see. What was Darman's hit points? So four. We'll go ahead and put his health out. We'll put him right beside him. I can find him. So da, 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 da. there it is. So he's got four. So it's her turn. So she's going to roll to shoot him. She gets two. We're putting them out. And we're going to roll. So she hits. So she does full point, uh, full damage. What was Diana's full damage? Two points. Okay. So Darman takes two points of damage. I don't think he would be as angry with her, so he'll probably just use his... Well, he's already blowed like four, so he's down to four on luck. So uh, he'd probably just shoot. So let's roll. Ah, one point of damage to Diana. So she's down to that. Now it's her turn. She might would try to... Move out enough that he can't, he's got to close in to get her. Because he can only shoot five away, right? One, two, three, four. So see, one, two, three, four, five. He'd have to move to shoot her. And that would give her a free shot. All right. So she's going to move. He's going to move one, two, all right, and then it's her turn. She's going to take a shot. So let's put an extra one out and roll. Four points of damage. Excuse me, uh, full points of damage. So it's two more points off of Dorman. And that takes him out. Oh, well. Well, it was a hard-fought battle for him. He almost got it. So then he kills over. Blah. And then uh, we'll go ahead and let... Uh, Zelm, what's her name? Yeah, it's Elm. She comes down and brings both of them back up. And old uh, Marcus jumps up first. Woo, you get up all the way, Marcus. Darman gets back up. He's like, Marcus is like, you idiot. <laughs> if you had just let me win, man, I was going to take whatever, half the money I got to get you a, a library. I think what you wanted. He's well. You didn't tell me that. He's I did, but you was all unconscious, <laughs> and they're they're cussing back and forth. And and Elm says, you know, if you'll please leave now, or I'll force you to. And he's like, oh, okay, whatever. So they they leave, and they're probably going to go fight outside somewhere. So anyway, that leaves uh, Diana as the winner. And now on to the final bracket. And now the final two come out for, well, for the first you know, groups of brackets. And then uh, Jerry comes in. He says, and now the final bracket for this group. We have Harry from Basara, who is a mason there. And he's also known for his high fashion. Let us look at his beautiful ensemble he has. 
It's like Freddy Krueger, if you ask me. <laughs> anyway. And then we have Domo Arigato from uh, Macho Macha Meta. He was a guard there. And they both hope to fund various projects, just like everyone else. <laughs> so then we're going to have to roll their initiative. Let's take a look at them right fast. Um, I already got Gatto. Oh, they uh, they have a sword because they are a guard. So this is high points there. And body is their big one. And then they got they can move ten, and they have tracking, which really ain't gonna do no good here. But they do have that jump away, which is good. But that's okay because Harry has it as well, and he's a mason. He still has the ten because he has a body of two, and he has the ten movement. Uh, I think they got the same, but poor old, poor old Harry is a hairless Neekin and has pink eyes. In other words, he's albino. He, yeah, suffers from apicia and uh, I, I, albinoism. But like I said, he's he's big into fan uh, fashion, and he's found Basra is a shanty town. It's made near a dump. It's the dump for Lancaster which is the main big city and he digs stuff out of it he thinks is beautiful and, and trendy at least considered you know towards them but anyway we'll get to the match here so both of them going to roll uh, so both of them get a plus two to their initiative roll let's start with uh, Mr. Harry and he's got a five plus two that gives him a seven so let's put Harry at seven. And we'll go ahead and roll for Mr. Damari Gatto. He has a five plus two. So that puts him at seven as well. And just like last time, we're going to have a roll off. We'll go ahead and let uh, Mr. Uh, Gatto roll. Oh, he's got a one. Surely Mr. Harry will beat that. No. So I have to roll off again. So let's let him roll. Uh-oh, uh -oh, he might have got it. Yeah, he got it. So Harry will get one ahead of him. So Gary, Harry will get to go first. So let's look at what Harry's got again, weapon-wise. Harry Louie. <laughs> and he's got a trowel, which is not a ranged attack. So he'll have to close in. Would Harry close in? And yeah, I think so. One, two, three. And I think the same of, of Gato. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, he's gonna be. Oop. He's gonna go. One, two, three, four, five. And then he's he's. Let's look at his hit points. He has four. Harry has four, so they're even. He's going to come up there. He's just going to try to close in. So now it's, it's uh, Domain Gato's turn. He's going to roll two dice. He's going to try to hit with his sword. Oh, he missed. So he swung. It is a miss. So now it's Harry's turn. He's going to try to stab him with his trowel. Oh, he missed too. Back to Tower Gato. He hit. And that's full damage. And it was all fours. So he gets a, a plus one to his luck. Let me write that down before I get it. I had to go back and watch the video while I go to get the other people's. So he hit for full points of damage. And that takes him out, if I'm not mistaken. That was quick enough. Yeah, four points. That takes him out. Dang, Harry. I kind of wanted Harry to win. But anyway, that was all about luck right there. So poor Harry just out. And then, of course, good old Elm comes down. She heals him. He pats, he pops back up. He says, well, I was hoping to go buy some high dollar fashions, but you were the better man today. He says, I appreciate that. And they shake hands. And then uh, Harry leaves. And they declare 
Don't know how I got to the winner. Now let's look at our standings. Uh, but before I do, I just want to thank you for watching. I'll try to piece together the next part. We'll have our six six people face off uh, again in brackets, and then they'll take us down to three people. After that, and we're just going to have a fatal three way. So. Uh,